Good evening again everyone. Welcome to another video. I hope you're keeping well. Another garden camp but this one's going to be slightly different. I've already got my tarp and bivy set up out in the garden. Just been inside eating some dinner because you can't turn down your mum's homemade cottage pie when it's offered to you so you can forget about ration packs for tonight i'm going full luxury with the dinner there's meant to be a super moon it's the last super moon of the year and even more interesting is i believe i've pronounced this right the etta aquarids which is a meteor shower best seen in the early hours the pre-dawn hours tonight or tomorrow morning early tomorrow morning before sunrise i've been looking online about how to use the night mode and film the moon or take photos of the moon and the stars and the meteor showers with this phone with this camera of course this is my new phone it's the i think it's the huawei pro something like that it's the 2019 model i know that anyway got a couple of drinks i've got a little beer to to review I'm trying to think what other drink i've got now it's a can of something i think it's a can of yeah thatcher's haze cloudy cider which i've had loads of times before it's gonna be good fun hopefully i can get some cool photos for you or some some sort of footage i'm probably going to go outside now and see if i can film the moon at least apparently this phone's got a moon setting on it i don't know so we'll see anyway right enough talking and let's get walking outside <laughs> chat to you in a bit nearing about midnight now i haven't really been checking the, the time for quite a while i've been out here just playing around with the night mode settings and the shutter speed i've managed to figure that out and i've managed to capture a, a few decent pictures well they're not bad considering it's the first time i've ever i've ever tried doing this and you picked out some of the stars the moon was particularly difficult there was there was no way i could zoom in on the moon enough to pick up all the craters and stuff like that on it and it was just so bright that I just it just it just looked like a sun <laughs> really shining really bright so anyways I thought I'd quickly show you the equipment I'm using the the through night head torch at the moment it's so powerful this is on the full beam and the camera doesn't really do it justice it is literally lighting up this entire section of the garden so I've got the integral designs tarp it's like a really lightweight sill nylon tarp it's got a shape to it and of course integral designs is now owned by rab so it's basically a rab sill wing tarp i think it's like a one person tarp but you can fit two people under it i have done that before really lightweight tarp and i've used it a few times and it is slowly falling apart the worst bit of all is this bit here it's when i was doing the pedder's way across norfolk last year with rob he accidentally tripped over the guy line and continued to move even though his foot was tangled up in it and it just literally tore all of this and this is actually the thread there going up to the guideline so that's how far it tore and i've tried to repair it with some tenacious tape and it's just it's just not having it it's just tearing more and more now so the guidelines on it are really really lightweight it's like dyneema called i believe little line lockers really good quality they get tangled up though so easily it took me about an hour to set it up because i was untangling it all even though i did tie them all up in little bows each one that is that 10 pound no brand fold up camping chair that i was speaking of in my 6000 subs video it turned up this morning 
and I ordered it probably about two days ago. Really, really fast delivery and it's so comfy. Someone asked me about walking poles. What walking poles do I use? So this one is an OEX uh, trigger light pole, I think. I did have two of them, but the other one broke and they're just like click locks. I do like click locks because they're so just quick to adjust. And I think that is that pole at full extension. And then I've just added some uh, high reflective tape on it. I saw Outdoor Enthusiast 101 doing that years ago. There you go. Luke, he's a cool dude. I'm sure you've all heard of him and subscribed to his channel. I've been watching a lot of his stuff again. Anyway, let's move round the back of the tarp. And then this pole is just a cheap decathlon pole. And once again, the other one of those is broke as well. And of course, this is this is what it would look like, not broken. So it's all seam sealed. It's got like a shiny kind of surface to it, and like you can see the the pattern on the on the fabric. It is really lightweight. I'm pretty sure it's still nylon anyway, and it has got this shape to it as well. And I've just pegged the sides down to sort of block the wind a little bit. In fact, I might take it off the tripod. Let's take you off the tripod that's better so I've got my Osprey Talon 44 in a rubble sack which is serves as like a liner for the bag Tyvek ground sheet it's a silver foam mat and that one's a mountain warehouse one I got two of them I got them from someone that had never opened them on eBay so they were brand new and they were nine pound each you buy two they were selling two together so i thought i might as well grab two of them so i've got two of those nine pound each bargain they, they cost more than that to buy single and then this bivy it's climbing let's get under the top i've set it quite low tonight just to sort of keep some warmth in and this bivy you haven't seen this for a while this is the rab Rab survival zone. It's a great little bivy, very lightweight. Yeah, it's bright blue, but I mean it's kind of like an emergency bivy. If you, it's you know it's so small and compact and lightweight, you could just keep it in your rucksack for when the shit hits the fan. But it's comfy. It's very warm. <laughs> Drawstring closure on it, just on one side. I use this bivy on its own well with a sleeping bag in it of course but I used it you know without a tarp and stuff like that when I went to France with the family and you may remember that video I was by a fishing lake and I started off uh, bivying on like the rocks overlooking the lake and in the middle of the night I could hear like rats and stuff crawling around me and I thought I don't really want to be on the same level as them so I moved all my gear at about 3 a.m to a picnic bench by the lake and I slept on the bench that was a memorable wild camp that's the bag for the chair oh yeah haze outdoor cut down z light mat I've got my I'm not going to get it out I can't be asked uh, go light down sleeping bag in there uh, x ped medium inflatable pillow best pillow I've got at the moment this is another mountain warehouse purchase it's like a microfiber lightweight sleeping bag liner mummy shape I'm getting into mountain warehouse stuff at the moment I'm thinking of doing a little video well I've got to buy all the stuff first but I'm gonna I'm basically gonna assemble a mountain warehouse only kit try and get it as cheap as I can of course and do a wild camp or garden camp with that and then my other mat that I've got inside here, this is another purchase, an eBay purchase. It's a three quarter length OEX Traverse self inflating mat. And there you go, it's about, about an inch thick, something like that anyway. So three quarter length mat, a little bit lighter. 
uh, not as warm as the climate one once again I picked up two of those mats for about £35 and they were brand new it was a couple that were going to do some long distance walk on eBay and because of the coronavirus they decided sod it we're not going to and or they couldn't rather because of lockdown and they sold both mats brand new with the tag still on okay £35 for the pair that works out £17.50 a mat thereabouts how good is that I find some of the best bargains on YouTube I'm telling you when it comes to outdoor gear and I feel like I don't get the recognition that I deserve for finding some of these bargains honestly I'm not making these prices up I mean I think this Rab Survival Zone Bivy I got cheap as well pretty much everything I buy is eBay eBay is the way forward don't ever go to shops again seriously you don't need to go to sod and go outdoors um, all you do you go in there you have a look at kit you want you price it up take some photos of it pisses off the, the the staff big time and then you go home you find it on ebay and you buy it there excuse me oh that was the cottage pie anyway that's my bum bag fanny pack it's got all the camera gear in very useful and then that is my bag of just random stuff that I'm going to be needing tonight two litres of water once again now gin bottles are good but they're expensive and a bit bulky and if you lose them you cry but these are just cheap you know plastic one litre bottles if I lose that or it breaks it's not the end of the world is it so once again don't need to spend money on now gins I have got a pair of now gins but don't always need them titanium cook set and there's the mug as well uh, rab wind shirt as it get colder I've got a little windshield I probably won't need that this started off as a 20 item kit list and I went oh bollocks I'm just it's still it's still lightweight though Thatcher's haze cloudy cider this is the beer that I'm gonna try out Beavertown Neck Oil Session IPA Book Gulliver's Travels Jonathan Swift I've nearly finished it I'm on part 4 when Gulliver meets the Whinhams and that's the Talking Horses and the Yahoos the Savage Humans I finished Animal Farm and that was absolutely brilliant loved that book Gel Fuel Van Gogh Green Gel Fuel which can only mean BCB Fire Dragon Gel Stove Titanium Long Handled Life Venture Spoon and it's easy just to pour all this out in it and then I've just got a few snacks in case I get peckish and a bit of breakfast I've got Cola Flavour Drink these protein bars are unreal get it to focus there we go peanut and caramel oh my god green tea for the morning another protein bar that is salted caramel flavor by bsn 20 grams of protein boom for the gains decent although i've squashed the bastard a little bit a mint belgian hot chocolate which i will mix with a nescafe three in one and some sugar that'll be tomorrow morning's drink tonight's drink I've got a pucker nighttime organic tea and a whisper hot chocolate yeah boy an Oshi muesli green coffee and whole grain oat flakes bar it tastes nicer than it sounds trust me just some assorted dried fruit and nuts I believe was it yeah and seeds that's to go with my porridge in the morning and then tonight I've just got a few little hard boiled sweets. Right, it's time to try out our first little 
alcoholic beverage of the night. As I said, it's a Beaver Town Neck Oil Session IPA. Really cool artwork again. A lot of the Beaver Town cans are usually well decorated. Right, it's 4.3%. So it's a Session IPA. Drink fresh, do not age. Brewed and canned at Beaver Town Brewery in London. I've had this one quite a while. The first sip's always deceiving, so I'm not going to say anything. It usually gets worse. And yet it's getting worse. It's, it's bitter. I've just had one of those chocolate protein bars. The Stacks one. So it could it could sort of alter my uh, perception of this beer got rolling boil on the stove deal with that in a minute having a hot chocolate yep yeah, it's got a very metallic bitter taste to it but sort of crisp it tastes better than that wild what was that called that wild something wild beer wild i can't even remember it was called bibble and that was awful this is a bit better than that but it's still not great 2.3 out of 10 i'm giving the old beaver town neck oil it gets the the 0.3 more than the bibble simply because it's called beaver town it's called neck oil and of the artwork but other than that it's not got a lot going for it in my opinion <laughs> <laughs> Oh, excuse me. I really can't taste anything different, really, in these beers. And I think I've got this one, and I think I've got an Elvis juice, which I've had loads of times before, and that's not too bad. I don't think I've got any other beers left. And once I finish those, I don't think I'm going to bother getting any more. It's got to have, like, loads of fruit in it. It's got to say that it's, it's more fruity, or it's like a, a fruity sour or something for me to even part with my money on it I'm, I'm really i'm just not that impressed by them they all taste the same in my opinion there's just there's no real difference and it's just got that bitter kind of taste and they go oh it's got fruit in it oh there's mango you can taste or passion fruit and all this and you, you sip it and you're just like no it hasn't it's just bitter it's just shite so i just I, i'm sorry i know there's loads of you out there that love beers and ipas and that and I think you're all just perverts. There's, there's no. I just don't see what is, what is so nice about them. I th almost feel like it's a culture. Like people go, oh, I've got to drink a beer. You know, it's what people do. It's what men do. They drink beers. You know, and I don't even think they actually like the taste of them. I think they just drink them because it's beer. Whereas I drink something because I like the taste of it, not because, oh, you know, it's what you do in the West Country, or, oh, it's what you do out in the sticks, you drink cider and that. No, I drink cider because I fucking like cider. I like the taste of it. But beers, I just don't get it. It's like a culture of, like, you have to drink beer. And I'm just sorry, it's bollocks. <laughs> I've got to go and find that now. Bollocks. Where are you, you bastard? Come back here. <laughs> Shit. I found it. <laughs> get in my bivvy soon have a hot drink read a bit of Gulliver's Travels I'll set an alarm on the phone for the early hours so we can get up and maybe catch some of the meteor shower don't know how that's going to work with getting photos of that but you might just have to take my word for it I saw it that's it I'm inside the bivvy I've been in it for about 45 minutes now and it's it's nice and warm fairly comfy despite the the thinner mats 
and there's no cold spots shouldn't be as there's a silver mat underneath as well so I did see about three meteors or shooting stars yeah they were so quick though you've, you've got to be really on the ball to see them should be going on now I can I can see part of the sky and the stars from underneath from where I'm underneath the tarp but what I'm probably going to do is sort of try and get some sleep for an hour, two hours and then get up and hopefully sort of see a bit more probably start getting light and then I don't know, try and get some sleep I'm probably not going to have the best night's sleep just because you know I'll be sort of getting up to try and sort of see some more meteors and stuff and you know it's just it's right in the middle of the the night which is annoying doesn't matter I kind of don't want to screw up my body clock at the moment because I've not been going to sleep till like really late and then sleeping in till like midday and it's not good at all I want to sort of be going to sleep earlier and getting up sort of around about 9am that would be ideal really for me at the moment it is what it is though it's been nice anyway yeah I'll let you know if I see any more stuff don't know if I'm going to be able to pick it up on the camera but I'll do my best so enough yawning and I'll see you in the early hours of the morning <laughs> Morning all, it's coming up to 7am and my alarm went off at 3am as planned to see some more of the meteor showers or falling stars, shooting stars, falling stars, don't know what that's about anyway and I did see two or three more, wasn't that many though really I mean they were they were really bright and they were really obvious nowhere near as many as I saw a couple of weeks ago but it was nice it was nice to you know still, still be outside and I sort of stayed awake for a little bit about half hour and then didn't really see that many I thought do you know what I'm just gonna get some sleep you know sort of broken sleep was just gonna screw up my body clock really and I need to sort of get that fixed at the moment so I went back to sleep and I slept through really, I sort of turned over a couple of times, I sort of slid about quite a lot on this on this mat and my rucksack that's in that bag has ended up over there somehow on this, I was actually quite warm, I was quite surprised by these mats, I think, I think the silver foam mat did more than the the inflatable three quarter length mat did I wouldn't really want to rely on just one or the other in a pinch I suppose it'd be alright it really to get you know a half decent you know sort of night's sleep I think you need you need both really so because what I'll do is I'll head back in the house and get get some you know some solid hours sleep inside and then come back out here and then get everything packed up really there's a, a real heavy dew there was a lot of condensation last night anyway as it was getting cold and very very heavy but this tarp is absolutely soaked um, as you can probably see on the camera there bivy bag though is dry doesn't feel damp at all I had this set quite low as well so that helped oh oh anyway it was a good night you know it was really nice and yeah it was a shame I didn't see see a lot of uh, shooting stars that is what it is really the, it was so clear though the sky was so clear you could see all the stars out the moon looked amazing it was good anyways I'm going to head inside, I'll chat to you soon. I 
afternoon again everyone it's it's been a few hours since I last spoke to you as you can see above me this tarp has kind of had it now this this bit is completely torn and it's just flapping around it's actually affecting the overall structure of the of the tarp the poles leaning to one side a lot so this is probably going to be the last time you'll see this tarp in use on the videos it's been a great little tarp i love it really it's it's nice it's lightweight it's perfect it's just a shame that it's got damaged i'm not gonna completely get rid of it um, what i'll probably do with this tarp is i'll keep it for spares like i'll take the dyneema guy lines off of it uh, the line locks and i'll probably keep a lot of the material for like spare parts the rab survival zone will probably be the last time you see this as well simply because i find it's quite tight it's quite, i'm quite restricted in it um a smaller person would probably be fine in it okay and it's rab it's really good quality it's you know it's fairly waterproof i've not tested it in the rain but i've had sort of light drizzle on it before and it's never let a drop in breathes extremely well but like all bivvies you've got to make sure that you leave you know an opening somewhere for your mouth to to breathe out of otherwise it, of course it will build up with condensation in there i've got loads of other bivvies anyway and they're a bit more spacious for me but they're still really light so what i'm thinking of doing is selling this bivy it's just it's a bit too narrow for my shoulders and the foot box is quite tight for me as well to move my legs and feet around in really good and i don't just want to stick it in the back of my car as an emergency bit of kit because it's it's rab it deserves it deserves better than that so i'd, I'd rather see it go to a good home and get a good use out of it so it'll be the last time you see this entire shelter really it's been good I'm going to get it all packed away and be thinking about the next video probably because I've just heard the part of like the the lockdown exit procedure is the gyms are going to be the last thing to reopen so I'm I'm not going to be going back to work for quite some time maybe as late as August who knows so I've got plenty of time to do loads more garden camps and training at home just thought i'd let you know on my plans for this shelter anyway so thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed the video get in the comments let us know what you think hope you enjoyed the the shots of the the night sky last night i did my best but, i mean bear with me i'm still learning how to use that camera and the phone and i'm still learning how to take night shots really and stuff it's, it's really difficult there's a lot more that goes into it than just normal photography but i think once you've got the hang of it you can get some really cool stuff so yeah i'm looking forward to practicing that more cheers for watching everyone stay safe take care of yourselves and look after each other and i'll see you on the next one bye